guys welcome back thank you for joining us today today's a little bit different i'm super excited to welcome one of my beautiful friends here to have an interview with us this is michelle diasinos she is amazing we used to do some work together and we've kept in touch ever since we've gone on our separate journeys and i thought you know what people need to hear her story and the work that she's doing at the moment and i'm going to let her introduce herself. So hi, Michelle. <laughs> hi, Steph. Thank you so much for having me today. So everyone, hello. My name is Michelle Diasnos. I, uh, I live here in Sydney with my husband, Phil, and my children, Leo and Eva. And I am a parent coach and I am the host of the Conscious Parent Podcast. Exciting. So I'm really glad to have her on. And we're just going to do a bit of an interview style video today because she's got so much knowledge and passion around conscious parenting and i thought this fits really well with emotional intelligence so i want to kick it off by just asking the question what is conscious parenting so tell us a bit about what conscious parenting is um, and what it means to you okay so conscious parenting is us the parents accepting mm -hmm. the invitation from our children to evolve and awaken and so I think a lot of the time we view our challenges and our conflicts with our children as a negative experience. But I think that sometimes I think what would happen if we started viewing these experiences as opportunities for growth and I get excited. <laughs> and opportunities to heal and an opportunity to not only connect with our children, but also to reconnect with ourselves. And so I really think that conscious parenting is about us, the parents, raising our consciousness as we raise our children, our next generation. Absolutely. And I think it's not just something that um, us as women, maybe, or mums are taking on. I think, right, Every, anyone, mm -hmm. can, anyone can be a conscious parent. Absolutely, yes. And it's, it's not really about applying a strict set of rules to how you parent. It's really about embodying a a belief system mm. and it's a process so then my next question I want to ask was what led you to this path of conscious parenting because I know our backgrounds are not in the work that we are doing right now I was never always an emotional intelligence coach I was doing something different as was Michelle and we actually met doing work together at a workplace called Autism Spectrum Australia where I was working as a speech pathologist you were working as an occupational therapist and I think we just kind of clicked because you know we get on really well and we're doing similar work and even though we've now taken our own different paths we are still connected because of the stuff that's meaningful and important to us and that's really our parenting journey so mm, yes. my next question was <laughs> what led you to doing you know taking on conscious parenting when you had come from something quite different um, yes. like it was still you know it was pediatric was working with kids and families but then you sort of went off and obviously we had our own families we've both got two kids so what led you to think i want to i want to do this and mm. and share this information great question steph so yes so i worked as an occupational therapist i also worked as a teacher before then Oh, I, I don't that. know if you knew that, oh, but <laughs> I that. Yeah, yes, so I was no stranger to working with parents and with children. And um, I, the type of work that we did, as you would know, was really focused around helping parents understand the needs of their children, helping parents work through some really challenging situations or behaviors with, with their family members, and also helping them build skills so that they can live a happy and healthy life. Um, and so I thought, I didn't have many expectations going into parenthood. Um, I thought to myself, well, I should be well equipped with some good tools and strategies yeah. to raise my kids. <laughs> and then I had a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And as every parent will know, having a child is not at all like what you expect, even when you don't think you have that many expectations. <laughs> and so what I hadn't anticipated was the sheer exhaustion that comes with the lack of sleep yeah I, yeah i didn't anticipate the guilt and the shame and the constant self-questioning i didn't anticipate the judgment from other parents and also the judgment of myself mm. and i and this was the part that i really dis didn't anticipate which was that in certain challenging situations i would have such an intense emotional reaction to mm. that situation and 
I started to see a pattern play out. Um, from a young age, I started to find myself getting quite triggered when my son engaged in, in what we would call a challenging behavior yeah. when we were working. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really curious why I was reacting this way when I had spent close to a decade working with families and helping them yeah. really navigate these difficult situations mm -hmm. and why I couldn't apply that to my own life. And the curiosity deepened when my daughter was born and I noticed that any kind of challenging situations that happened with her mm. didn't trigger me in the same way as they did with my son. Oh. And so that was very interesting for me. Um, I would find myself just getting extremely angry. So the the pattern was I would be calm, I would be grounded, I'd be holding space for my son and then it would it would be a certain day or perhaps it would happen for the 11th time yeah. yeah yeah and i just felt myself get extremely angry extremely anxious um start to really try and control him and try and control the situation and make him behave yeah. in a certain way or do a certain thing that i was asking and so um that's I, I did some work I, I delved deeper into that to try and understand what was going on with me mm -hmm. and that's where I found conscious parenting and that's where I started learning about conditioning from our childhood and how that affects us as yep. people and mm -hmm. as parents I started learning about intergenerational trauma and I started learning about healing um, the trauma from our lineage and so that has been the journey I've been on yeah. and it has been very interesting mm. and today I am just so passionate about spreading the message about this and it is my mission to work with families who are ready to be on this journey yeah. mm. and who just are ready to start creating that playful peaceful and present home that they so deeply crave and this is important to me because I truly believe that a peaceful home is where a peaceful world begins absolutely i think we are so on the way the same way like so many things you were saying just then i was going yes 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 like i think we we have that same mindset that when mm -hmm. kids have their emotional outbursts or if they're going through um some kind of situation you know we have to be able to like you said hold space for them and not let our you know, the stuff that went on in our childhood or the way parents raised us um, come into the, the situation because we're trying to raise a new, playful, peaceful generation mm -hmm. to, you know, for the future. And that's what our kids are, right? Like they are the future generation. And I that still sometimes really just clicks with me. And I think, oh, we are, who's to say my son isn't going to be the next um, prime minister or, you know, someone... Mm -hmm you've got to have those ideals of yes the kids all the kids here all the kids in our schools in our society in the greater world are going to be the next leaders and change makers so absolutely but yeah, it's hard to get out of your own way sometimes i think so <laughs> definitely we get stuck in the minutia of everyday life and yep. the conditioning the fears the ego start to come up in in some of those really intense situations so, yeah and it's yeah. hard to like you said you've got to do some inner work and take that time to um, find out other ways to respond rather than react and and all the time we, we're modeling to our kids how mm -hmm. they're going to act as adults or as teenagers or, or whatever so mm -hmm. it's a uh, <laughs> it feels sometimes like a bit of a weight but then you think actually I've got so many like there's so many tools and strategies and knowledge out there and people like Michelle you know people like you who are spreading the information and and just you know your coaching i'm sure it's it's stuff that is not crazy high tech you've got to put in hours of work no, it's not like that not. It, it's you know natural and mm -hmm. and oh, i i just love it so i also wanted to sort of ask a little bit about how emotional intelligence relates to conscious parenting because i know we like i said before we've got a lot of similar threads and themes and things like that and if we think about emotional intelligence as um, you know being able to be aware of your emotions but also to manage them appropriately which we can't always do even as adults sometimes we need someone else to a shoulder to lean on or someone to talk to and um, also the you know the ability to be aware of your surroundings other people mm -hmm. and your relationships and being able to manage them so having things like 
behavioral self-control and stress mm-hmm. management and definitely um and, and empathy i think you know that's one of the core you know that the core competencies of eq are there's 26 of them and one on its own is empathy mm-hmm. so about having empathy for um i guess we're talking about kids and families um at the moment so i wanted to sort of see what you thought with how some of those things, the self-awareness and managing your emotions and things, how that relates to conscious parenting. Yes, well, EQ does play such a pivotal role in conscious parenting. And and so we know as well that our children learn most powerfully through modeling. And so as part of that, it's really us, the parents, modeling mm-hmm. that regulation of our emotions yeah which and that I can think, be hard to oh, do yeah. for, for ourselves like how many times do we wake up late or we're, we've got to rush out the door to work and we're, we're trying to get our kids ready for preschool or school or whatever it might be mm-hmm. how hard is it to be like i'm cool like <laughs> regulate your own emotions so that you don't you know um help make your child sort of flip their lid or, or mm-hmm. get upset because you're rushing them that's yes. really hard to manage that i agree yeah i so i think that's that's exactly where the emotional coaching comes in and where we can really provide that safe space for them to feel their emotions that's where we can really start to step into their shoes and see their point of view and have empathy for them Mm. and start teaching those skills from a very early age yeah right Mm. very early age like you know i think about we've got younger kids and they're you know two three four five so that kind of preschool Mm -hmm. age and I remember, I think we were talking about it a while ago, John Gottman's work around the different types of parents. And obviously one of them is being the emotion coach parent. And that's basically exactly what you're saying, holding space for your child and treating each um, emotional situation as an opportunity for learning and loving and supporting. So if they're going through something where they've, you know, they've come home from school and they did really poorly on a test and they're just melting down and you think it's not a big deal. It's a tiny test. Get over it. Mm. You know, you've got to first have that awareness around, okay, this is just me projecting onto you. Yes. Whereas you're actually really upset about this. This is a big issue for you. Mm-hmm. And, and just saying like kind of validating, right. Mm-hmm. Um, what they're feeling and, um, let having, having that space for them to get upset and to cry and not to say, just stop crying, go to your room if you want to cry, you know, those kind of things. And I love, I love what you're saying around holding that space and then just allowing them to, um, feel their feelings. Feel their feelings. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I was searching for like literally that term. And then I think at the end sort of thinking, okay, like I I like to go into that a little bit if it's the right time of that problem solving, like Mm, what what can we do about it? Like if you, went poorly on a test if your friend didn't invite you to the party if you fell over and bumped your knee what do you reckon we should do like how can we solve and i'm always saying my kids are probably getting sick of it how can we solve this problem there's always a way to solve the problem yeah come on i can help you and then you just start those creative juices going and we show our kids through our words and our actions without even realizing it that we are sending them certain messages yes so for example we might show them stop crying because I can't deal with it right now. Mm. We may not say those words, but our actions may show that to our children. Or we may say something like, "Um, you're being too loud right now, be quiet. And that is just us dealing with what coming up against something that's uncomfortable for us. And do you reckon it's, yeah, do you reckon it's like subconscious that we probably in the moment don't even know we're doing it? Yeah, I think it takes time to cultivate that awareness around recognizing that yeah seeing the situation for for what it is Mm. and taking a step back and being able to become aware of what may be our conditioning that's impacting how we're feeling in that moment as well yeah yeah because it's in the moment as well isn't it like if we're both if us and the child are stressed and you know they're having a meltdown or something and we are frustrated ourselves or it's too loud and we're you know we're in an emotionally heightened state as Mm -hmm. well yeah it can be hard to um kind of step back quickly in that situation and uh, so that's I guess that's what sort of the work is around being able to catch yourself in the moment and just having that awareness that Mm -hmm. um, you know this is going to happen in the moment and how can I not contribute to my child's like getting that kind of power struggle or absolutely like you say that subconscious like oh like we we do those Mm -hmm. movements or the you know those things that we're not necessarily saying it Mm -hmm. but our actions show it right absolutely Mm, that's really hard yeah Mm -hmm. so I wanted to ask you what is one of the first things that 
parents um, watching or listening can do just to sort of start creating a little, little bit more of a conscious I guess being a bit more of a conscious parent so something that they can just start today or you know let's plant a seed that this is this is something that they can easily achieve yeah this is a great question Steph and I like that we're trying to simplify it because I think that we yeah. live in a world where there's just so much noise right now about how we should do lots of things and how we should parent what what constitutes being a good parent yes and so my answer to that question is to set an intention I think that in life we are so good at setting intentions and goals around other important things like our career or yes. our health um, and yeah. yet I see that many of us including myself earlier on hadn't set any specific intentions on what I wanted our relation my relationship with my children to look like or yeah. what I envisaged for them for the future mm. and so it's a delicate balance but uh, I'd like to do a little visualization a mini visualization exercise if that's okay yes I'd love yeah. to yeah okay so if you're listening to this while you're driving right now please don't do this wait until you um, are in a place where it's safe for you to close your eyes and, and to write down some notes so um, I invite you now to close your eyes and just take a deep breath And I'd like you to imagine your child sitting in front of you, but your child is now an adult. So your child is about 35, 40 years old, mm -hmm. and you've invited them over for dinner. They've come over, and you're cooking, you're talking together, you're sitting down to have your meal, and you're just learning about what their week has been like. And I'd like you to just pause in that moment and I'd like you to ask yourself the question, what qualities does this person before me have? Mm -hmm. What values does this person before me have? Who are they? What kind of person are they? Are they open-minded? Are they confident? Are they loving and caring? Are they strong in their convictions? So you can open your eyes now and take and pause <laughs> the video and just write down all the things that came to your mind and reflect on that for a little while. And now I'd like for us to go inwards as we look through all the things that we wrote down. And we know that our kids learn most powerfully through modeling, mm -hmm. through what they see. Yeah. So I'd like you to have a look at what you've written down there and ask yourself, how am I showing these quality, qualities in our life today? How am I showing these values in our life today? And is there anywhere where I am not showing mm. this to my child or my children? And that's the activity. Wow, so. that's so powerful. <laughs> I've probably three times throughout that got little chills Ooh. when I thought I'm sitting down with, I, I imagine my older son mm -hmm. for some reason, sitting down with him and picturing what he would look like and how I would feel to have him over for dinner and think I'm so proud of you and what kind of person you are and oh, I just got the chills. Oh, when it you just, said that. <laughs> I, I haven't imagined, I get, you get so stuck in the mindset of mm -hmm. I'm the adult, they're the child and I've got to help you and teach you. And mm -hmm. I love how you said before, they already come to us fully whole with, with everything. They're little sovereign beings of, mm -hmm. of themselves. And I've never thought of him, of my kids older and, and what I, I haven't had that intention of I think I, you know, we get stuck in the daily grind and yeah, stuff. Definitely. So that's a beautiful activity. I really Ooh, love that. I'm glad you enjoyed oh, that. Oh, that's and so good. You can always go back to that and, and do that. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling like you're losing a bit of focus and you need some help finding your inner compass in this extremely noisy world, yeah. we can use that to center us and yeah. set some intentions. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you're right. I think we can do it again and again when, when we've lost that... Um, what am I doing here or this whole week has been crap or you know just to recenter yourself and think remember I want I want to be modeling um kindness or empathy mm -hmm. or self-awareness and am I doing that so I I would love to do something like that on the weekend or the Friday night when the kids are in bed that's kind of me time to mm -hmm. do something like this where it just makes me go oh that's why I'm doing this and I'm on the right track and hopefully yes. so I love that that's so cool 
Thank you. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about something that you're working on at the moment um, with your conscious parenting work or a project that you've got coming up? Yes, absolutely. I'm very excited. I'm actually in the process of building a 10-week one-to-one program. <gasps> yes. Oh. Um, so this is really for parents who would like to identify what their triggers are mm. and would like to delve in a little deeper into their histories, into their past and understand where these triggers come from, what wow. conditioning is coming up yeah. for them and uh, really implement some re- some tools, some useful, simple but powerful tools that they can use in their everyday life to help them connect with their children. and to reconnect with themselves that's so so cool exciting and in the meantime that'll be out mid-year but Mm -hmm. in the meantime if you'd like to hear more please head over to my podcast it's available on apple podcasts and spotify it's the conscious parent podcast with michelle diasinas and yeah have a little listen see if it resonates oh and i'm sure it will because i know a lot of people that are out now watching um, these youtube videos and listening to podcasts and things we now I think we're realizing that this is the time in the world where people are looking for something a bit more, a bit deeper than like I was saying, the daily grind and getting work done. We're bringing up families and little, you know, kids who are going to be change makers and leaders of the future. So I feel like there's a buzz and and this Mm -hmm. is kind of the time where things like conscious parenting and emotional intelligence and self-awareness is, is coming up as, you know, in the forefront of not just family homes but schools as well and and I just can't wait to see what the next five ten years is gonna bring um for our kids because they're our little babies and um, (laughs) we want them obviously to grow up as confident and resilient and empathetic and you know as they possibly can be so Mm -hmm. I hope you guys will join with me in saying a huge thank you to Michelle for coming on and um working (laughs) with us with all these um (laughs) crappy bodgy things that have gone wrong today (laughs) our microphone and webcam and laptop and anyway but it has been fun so um i just want to say thank you so much for joining me and doing this and just sharing your knowledge i think there's so many um little sort of areas where eq and conscious parenting fit together and Mm -hmm. you know when you're talking about um in your one-to-one course coming up that you're working on saying how you know it's looking at going back through you know your upbringing and childhood and looking for um you kind of see those gaps and times where you think oh this is why i am how i am now or this mm-hmm. is what my parents um taught me or inadvertently i learned so i think that that's a gap in eq that we don't often go back and look at those really deep um sort of behaviors and things like that and what happened in the past so it fits together beautifully so please um hop on to instagram and um follow michelle's work as well and obviously listen to her podcast they <laughs> are they're heartwarming and you can listen on the way to work as well so thank you thank michelle. you very much yeah. <laughs> loved it <laughs> thanks cute <laughs> my stomach <laughs> we are on a roll <laughs> You're hungry. I'm not that hungry. I just (laughs) ate and now it's like... (sighs) Um. Yeah, exactly, Steph. (laughs) It's just too unnatural. I was like, (laughs) keep it straight. Keep it straight. (laughs) Okay. I'm not going to hit. Okay, we'll just... Is it still running? Oh, did it Oh, Oh, it's still recording. Oh, it is. (laughs) I saw this disco, this is almost <laughs> full, and then I didn't see that thing. Oh, oh it's still recording, it I is. Know. Okay. Why didn't I at least finish my sentence? <laughs> it's okay. okay. Edit that section. <laughs> really hard. Um, do you want me to ask the No, that was oh, good, the way it is. I, um, do you know, in my head, I legit so thought that we'd be able to do this in one take. In my me head, too. I was like, it'd be fine, we'll be doing, I was able like, to we'll do it. I'll have some goofy moments. And- <laughs>